welcome to part 8 of this uh, series where we are trying to predict the sale price of houses in a city called Ames in Iowa and if you have any questions or suggestions please uh, put that in the comment section below all right so previously we have seen that uh, you know we tried to fill all the missing values and handle them and in today's uh, uh, video we are going to again do a lot of data pre-processing like uh, checking the duplicates finding the outliers removing or handling the outliers and then we will see uh, gradually that how we can apply different uh, statistical modeling such as uh, you know lasso re lasso method or ridge method uh, in order to remove you know uh, columns features which are not important also we will see how we can uh, create new features also called as feature engineering so welcome to the uh, part 8 and I hope you will learn something new today okay so uh, there is a method called duplicated in uh, the, the pandas data frame which we can use to check uh, whether there are any duplicate records uh, both in our training data set and in our test data set so let's quickly run this simple line of code and see what do we get okay thankfully we don't have any duplicate records so if we had duplicate records then it, it, it is advisable to uh, if it is not giving any new information uh, so what we are going to do is we, we are going to drop those duplicate records okay um, so we are going to do check for some outliers uh, so what do I mean by outliers is you know something which is unusual right uh, but just to keep in mind outliers always may not be bad thing uh, but it depends on the context so when we are talking about outliers in a, a in terms of income then yeah somebody who is making say millions of dollars compared to people who are making hundred thousands of dollars then yeah the million dollar person uh, will be an outlier which which can you know totally skew your analysis but uh, in some certain cases we might be interested only in checking the outliers for example if we are taking the performance of athletes then of course Usain Bolt kind of uh, players athletes uh, they will be outlier because uh, they are you know setting uh, international records and such so it depends on what your context are in this case you know houses uh, of a certain size uh, you know is, is we are interested in to find the price but then if something is unusual then we are going to remove them so first let's check uh, you know one of the uh, is the living area versus the sale price so we want to find anything unusual that means the size of the house is too big but the price is less so, you know we want to remove those kind of outliers if any so let's check this out and I would encourage everyone to do their own analysis by trying to do some scatter plot yeah so in this case uh, you know I have already done it so I was familiar with it so if you see here some of the house are like around 5,000 square feet and beyond 5,000 square feet but then their price is uh, uh, surprisingly very low which doesn't make much sense so what we are going to do is we can see most of the houses are within 4,000 square feet so what we are going to do we are going to remove uh, this uh, couple of dots here just by filtering any houses which are greater than 4000 square feet also uh, there is something called as a sale condition in our data set and it says partial which actually doesn't represent the actual market value so we are going to filter also those outliers as well let's see quickly how to do that all right so how can we uh, remove the outlier is very simple we can use the uh, drop method in the pandas data frame and by just setting a boolean condition saying that wherever the living area total size is greater than 4000 square feet just remove them and make sure the data frame is updated in place uh, so very simple we'll just run this command and it should take care of that right all right next uh, very important thing in data analysis is you know creating uh, doing the feature engineering uh, so what we're doing going to do next is you know we're going to maybe create more features out of the existing ones uh, because sometimes what we can do is we can club a couple of columns together into one single column so for example uh, let me give you an example in this case for example say we want to calculate the total square feet of the house so what we can do we can sum the uh, this column living area then we can sum the basement square feet so we can basically sum three or four columns together just to create one feature so that will reduce the number of columns in our data set which is uh, sometimes a healthy way of doing data analysis okay 
So calculating the total square feet, uh, you know, of different things. Uh, here we are doing the total square feet of the house, total uh, floor square feet, total porch uh, square feet. Um, it's very straightforward. Just the uh, by reading the data description of uh, the columns, we can find out that the total square feet of the house is nothing but the sum total of the basement square feet plus the living area. Right? Uh, very simple. Very straightforward. Uh, total floor square feet is nothing but the first floor square feet and second floor. Square but in some cases the second floor if it is a uh, single story house then it will be zero uh, the total porch square feet is nothing but the open porch square feet enclosed enclosed porch square feet the three assassin porch and the screen porch uh, if we sum total all this then it becomes the total porch square feet yeah uh, I mean you can also say that uh, the total square feet could also be the sum total of all four or this but then still we are interested to see uh, whether individual this uh, columns here does uh, have any influence on the sale price as well okay uh, next uh, we are going to create some boolean features so just keep in mind that boolean features are slightly different compared to numerical features and categorical features boolean features are more like yes no type uh, true and false type right so what we're doing here is we're creating a few col extra additional columns uh, like whether the property has a basement has a garage has a porch has a pool or was it remodeled is it a new building because we know that new buildings probably will be more costlier uh, and was it completed was the building completed right so if you see there are very simple uh, conditions you know uh, whether if it is if the, if the total base has a basement then the sum total of the square feet will be greater than zero of course right um, if it is if it is uh, not greater than zero if it is equal to zero that means that has no basement so similarly for garage for porch and for was completed we can check whether the sale condition was partial or not so in that in that case uh, you know we know that the building was not completed so hence it is not they were not able to sell uh, you know those kind of properties uh, what we are going to do next is you know just run this and this should create my boolean features so what we're going to do next is i'm going to store all these uh, columns in a list so that i can accordingly update my remember whenever we make changes uh, to the columns we make sure that our numerical features categorical features we have a proper count so that we can accordingly handle them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put all these uh, columns here right and uh, let's uh, let's complete it uh, this way all right so now we know that uh, you know whenever we make some changes to the columns we do check how many numerical features do we still have and how many categorical features we have in this case now we have a third called boolean features so if i just run this uh, small few lines of code uh, which is again the same thing we have been doing so far uh, nothing no code has changed um, all i'm doing is just creating a list of columns in the numerical feature a list of column in the categorical features i can see that there are 66 numerical and 25 categorical uh, just one thing what we have done is uh, we have to separate out uh, the number of columns the boolean features out of this uh, numerical list so what we are going to do is just write a simple one line of code uh, all, all I am doing is any features which are not in boolean features just uh, assign them that way right okay so that should take care of it so uh, what we have done so far is we have created um, uh, three types of features numerical features categorical features and boolean features uh, let's now also see can we also find the total number of bathrooms uh, in the property okay so in order to find the total bathrooms uh, all we do is sum the full bath and we multiply 0.5 with the half bath because it's a boolean uh, 0 and 1 and we do the same thing for the basement uh, full bath and if it is a half bath again we multiply it by 0.5 so total number of bathrooms can be the sum total of these four columns so just of course we are making some adjustments so if it is a half bath we are multiplying with 0.5 so once we again have converted something so we are going to again recheck 
our numerical features and the categorical features and see how many do we have so we have 67 numerical and 25 categorical features but now you might see a difference that you know there are more columns more than 81 columns uh, because we have created new features in the shape of a boolean features right and uh, over the time there will be more features that we'll create and then we will try to reduce them uh, based on their importance wow uh, it's great that we have come together so far uh, in our part 9 of the video what we are going to do is we are going to do some log transformation for the features uh, you know which has uh, skewed uh, numerical values uh, for example we saw the case of a sale price and we are going to also evaluate other numerical features uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to apply one hot encoding for handling our categorical features right because remember we have to convert all our categorical features into numerical features uh, we will also uh, do data modeling right uh, where we are going to use lasso regression or ridge regression kind of analysis and this will remove the you know import this will keep the important features and we'll try to remove the non important ones till then have a great day keep practicing these concepts this will come very handy and i hope you're enjoying the video so far and please do subscribe and like